Thank you, Jose, uh, to be here. And um, let us explain uh, why you are here. So if you can talk about uh, your score and about the movie and the relationship you developed, I suppose, with this uh, masterpiece. With masterpiece. Well, uh, I was commissioned by the, by, uh, the Jornat uh, through Jay Weisberg, uh, Weisberg the, the director, to write a score for an orchestral score for, the, for this new version, probably the definite version <laughs> of the unknown, uh, which was uh, definitely uh, a kind of finding in the sense that for me, knowing the film, uh, the previous film, with the film we, we knew, uh, it was so amazing to get these very little details. I mean, there's no new story, but, the, but there are a huge assortment of new gestures and new inserts that were li literally making up a new film, a new discourse in many, many places. So uh, this was so compelling. And basically what, what I did was uh, try to research and get like enough sources from the time, let's say um, musical sources, not only from, uh, let's say, silent film cue sheets of the time doing music for Lon Chinese film, for Jean Crawford films, uh, it was more about not all, not only like getting the music of the theater or the cinema, but trying to gather as well these Spanish mythic scene where uh, Todd Browning masterpiece takes place. It's a magical Madrid with gypsies that do circuses. In, in Spain, which is like. Uh, not very obvious uh, for, for Spanish culture itself. So let's think about, for instance, the premiere of the unknown in a Spanish cinema. And let's imagine, uh, I don't know, a uh, minor composer <laughs> of the time, uh, writing using the style of the great masters, like, let's say, Falla, uh, let's say Albeniz and Turina, which is, which is definitely my favorite, I should say. <laughs> and uh, what I will say is that I try to mimic this uh, kind of style. Probably the the process, the part of the process that took longer, was to get into the music of these composers and try to gather something for, for the film, just the way that masters of silent film music used to score this. Uh, wonderful pieces. So um, basically that, that was my, my approach because, by the way, it's so curious that Spanish scholars currently are finding that that, that set of underrepresented music of Spain inside Hollywood, like uh, birth of film music. So why not, like you know, bet something? Um, get inspired, that's what it is, and try to mimic, like, uh, just as the magical Madrid of Browning, let's build up the magical musical Madrid and Hollywood of the Jornate, that's what I try to, to do. The score is, is dedicated, of course, to my Jornate family, <laughs> of course, <laughs> including the orchestra, including all of us. Did you find some uh, difficulties, some uh, critical points in your opinion that uh, uh, to develop this uh, Spanish mood uh, to the film with uh, your, uh, w w while you w were writing your score? Yes, that's a good question because um, indeed what, I, what happened to me 
Well, it's, it, this is basically my first not orchestral score, of course, and not first orchestral score for The Silence, but this is my first future film uh, orchestral score. So what I found difficult is precisely to gather this set of not very clear styles for me, not very clear rhythms, and the, basically to gather them all and to put them together. That's, that's what it is. I think that that was the toughest part of all the process because uh, what I feel is that Browning's uh, uh, direct direction, Browning's, uh, Browning's ideas just are like flowing like in a, in a constant line, like very thin golden line since the beginning of the film to the end. And keeping that in pace with uh, the usual technique of the time, which is the cue sheet, gathering pieces, and I mean that was the hardest part by far, and is the hardest part while while performing with the orchestra. That's what it is. Maybe you have also uh, seen the uh, sound uh, one, uh, the freaks of yeah, Todd Browning. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting also to make a comparison b between the two movies, in uh, your opinion, yes. could be useful. Yes, well, yes, well, th th that's, that's a point. I mean, the, one of the first things uh, I did after knowing I was doing a Browning film Immediately, I immediately got to the to the sound era <laughs> of Browning, just to gather. Okay, what are Browning's ideas for music? Curiously, it's much more about uh, the asiatic music, of music happening inside the scene. And there's where I got ideas, for instance, for the circus, for for this uh, circus uh, mood and ambience. But uh, I mean, it's so curious because. Browning is particularly silent <laughs> during the sound era. So, I mean, uh, regarding the music. So, uh, I mean, that was kind of useful, but not for much. Though, it was useful to get, uh, in a sense, that sense Browning gets or builds of linking uh, pieces. That's exactly what I say. I do really think that uh, he, he's a kind of uh, silent poet. <laughs> I don't know if I am overdosing <laughs> the, with the word, but uh, that's what I feel. And basically that's what Freaks uh, spoke me about, and that's something I tried to pursue uh, in the unknown score. <laughs> 